Now is your chance to confront those that have hurt you. Do not feel the need to hold back. <sighs> okay, here we go. You are so difficult. You are like high maintenance. I cannot do this with you. It's like all of you. Sorry, don't even look at me. I, I really wanted things to be different with you. I thought things would be different with you. If it took moving mountains and valleys to make you happy, I would, but it seems like you didn't want the same. <laughs> wow, that's really sad. Your allotted time is up. That will be $469. If you came to this video, you probably think I'm a big ol' hater, and which you would be correct. That is true. I love games, but some simply don't deserve to be loved. Uh. So stretch your fingers and prepare to tell me that I'm wrong in the comments, because these are all the games that I f hated. Okay, here's the games I hated, uh, baby! First and foremost, I'm just gonna get this one out of the way. I did not like Fortnite, developed by Epic Games. Believe it or not, I actually did play Fortnite when Battle Royale came out because I wanted to at least try it before hating on it. Of course, a ton of people were like, oh, it's popular, I hate it, but I wanted to actually give it a shot before I decided if I liked it or not. I already experience so much stress in my life. I don't need more of it. This game is so stressful. <laughs> Nothing compares to the stress of being shot at and having to build at the same time. I'm knocking on death's door and you want me to plaster a wall? Now! You want me to lay cement in my new driveway as I'm about to get murdered? Why? The only way I could stay alive in Fortnite was to just hide in a bush until there were like 10 people left and that was just, that just ended up being the strategy because I didn't know what to do. I was too scared to run out into the open. The weird thing is I wasn't scared of other players so much as I was scared of the thought of having to multitask. It's a no from me. My life is challenging enough as it is. The second game on my list is Naughty Bear, developed by Artificial Mind and Movement. So the reason I bought this game was because when I first got my Xbox 360 when I was like 16, I would go into GameStop and just find the cheapest game that I could. And the first one I found was Naughty Bear for like $4. I had never heard of the game before, but I was like, what could go wrong? <laughs> Wow, I can see why it was $4. That was 10 years ago, and I decided I'm gonna try to recount my memories of this game without actually looking up what the game is about. The only things I really remembered about the game is that you are a bear trying to kill people on a map, and I don't remember why. I don't remember what the point was. You were just a murderous bear, and you could like unlock new ways to kill people. It was just not fun, and also like, a really ugly game. I feel bad being like, you're ugly, but like that game was ugly. <laughs> it just looked like it was like a PS2 game. It was really bad. I hated this game. Worst purchase I've ever made in my life. Sorry, wallet. The third game on my list is Deadpool by High Moon Studios. I wanted this game to be good so badly. I loved when the first Deadpool movie came out and I enjoyed it so much. It was like one of the first movies that actually got me into like superhero villain type of movies. The weird thing about this game is that the combat was fine. The environment was fine, the script was fine, and that's kind of the problem. It's just okay. <laughs> There's nothing special about it, which I think is worse than playing a game that's inherently bad, because then at least when it's bad, you can make fun of it or something. But this Deadpool game was just not good. There was just nothing special about it, and that's like the worst kind of criticism I think you can give to anything. I will say it's one redeeming quality is the voice acting. Nolan North, of course, does a great job. So yeah, kind of a big deal. He can't carry the entire game on his back. It's impossible, so. Yeah, sad. This one has ruffled a few feathers when I've talked about it on stream. I hated Control, <laughs> developed by Remedy Entertainment. I did not like this game at all for like one big reason. Everyone I knew suggested this game to me because it's very story driven and that's my type of game. I love the story in games. The one thing that drove me to give up on this game after like two or three hours was the fact that the save points are so far apart. I hated, I could not, oh, it made me so mad. You could be in combat for 20 minutes and if you die, you get sent back all those 20 minutes and you have to do the whole thing again. Like there's just no such thing as like check points in this game. There are just different bases that you go to where you are able to save and it drove me 
fucking crazy. Also, I do love story-driven games, but this game is so vague on purpose. It kind of reminds me of like Death Stranding when they were doing all of their ads and marketing where it's like, what's this game about? It's so weird. This girl's eating a cockroach. What the fuck is going on? If you're not gonna tell me what the game is about, it almost feels lazy. It feels like it's an easy way to be like, well, we don't have to write a story if we make it super vague. I love mysteries and I love thrillers and I love games with like a good plot twist, but I spent three hours being like, I don't know what's going on and I'm dying, so peace out. The next game I have is literally any of the Sims games that are specifically on console, developed by Maxis. I love the Sims so much, but Sims on console is like a special kind of pain. So if you have always played Sims on console, I think it's a great game and it's something that you're used to, but if you started playing Sims on PC with like a mouse to use instead of like a joystick to move your cursor around, it just doesn't work. Moving the cursor on console feels so slow. It's like you're moving through molasses. I think playing the Sims on PC with like a mouse just really spoils you because you can move everything super quickly. It's not that it's necessarily a bad game, it's just trying to play that type of game specifically on console is very difficult. Too difficult for me to play. The end. The next game on my list is probably my biggest disappointment, which is Power Washing Simulator by Future Lab. My TikTok for you page is exclusively therapy, books, and power washing videos. There is something so satisfying about watching like a car get detailed or someone power wash their fence after like 20 years and just watching all of the sludge just come down. So when I found out there was a power washing simulator game, I was like, this is it. Like this is what life is about. I could not wait to power wash everything. I was so excited until I learned how you play it. You essentially have to move your cursor like back and forth or like up and down constantly, which means your face the entire time you're playing it is like, I got so motion sick playing this game within like the first five minutes. Like I, I could not take it anymore. I was like bracing my desk just like, Ugh. if you are prone to motion sickness, like I am, this is not the game for you. <laughs> it's so easy to start playing this game and then like just puke everywhere. And then you'll have to clean it all up with the power washing tool. Like it's just a cycle. It feels like it was done on purpose. This game makes me the most sad because I was really excited to play this. This is one of those games where you can like throw up a show on Netflix or like put on music or a podcast or whatever and just <laughs> Unfortunately, the power washing tool is not strong enough to clean up my shitty attitude. Sorry guys. And the last game on my list, sorry guys, I have to do it. It's Kingdom Hearts developed by Square Enix. As a child, I wanted to play Kingdom Hearts so badly. I would beg my mom to take me to McDonald's because our play places had like a Kingdom Hearts demo set up in the play place. I wanted this game so badly, but we couldn't afford it. I was very like, we can only afford like one game every like six months or like if it's a gift from a family member type of thing. But thankfully for me, that game got remastered as an adult when I had adult bucks. So I did play it and I hated it. <laughs> Why is this game so fucking hard? It took me one month to beat the Alice in Wonderland boss, the very first boss. It took me a month, 30 days. This is the type of game that reminds me that games when I was a kid really relied on difficulty in exchange for content because games when I was younger were not that long. Like games were super short, but I think developers knew that if they made it difficult and made it harder to play that they could stretch out playtime from the player. I just want to sit on my ass and relax. So Kingdom Kingdom Hearts just broke me. It was so difficult and I was like, even with picking the easiest difficulty on the remaster, it was so hard. Not to mention Donald Duck was an absolute waste of air. <laughs> we would enter a room and like immediately Donald Duck and Goofy would just 
Also, the story is just, what the f is going on ever in Kingdom Hearts? It's so convoluted and all of my diehard Kingdom Hearts friends will be like, it makes complete sense if you play all 18 games out of order. Does it ever make sense? Or have you constructed the story that you want in your mind? If the remaster had scaled difficulty a little bit better, I think I would have liked it way, way more. This is probably the top game that I wish I enjoyed just because it is such a good nostalgic memory for so many people that started playing games as kids, but it's just not happening for me. It's just, it's just too much. Thanks for watching this video on all the games I hated. Don't forget to call me a bunch of names down in the comments. I'm fully expecting the Kingdom Hearts fan club to come through and just be like, your IQ is not high enough to understand what's going on in this game. As always, thank you to my fan house supporters who are just the best and enable me to be a big ol' hater on the internet. Thank you, Zachary Editorman, for sitting through my garbage gaming takes. If you enjoyed the video, go like that shit, won't you? Don't forget to join me next week when I dropkick Donald Duck into another time. Time zone. Bye guys! <laughs>